Imagine waking up tomorrow morning and finding out that electricity bills are gone forever because one man just revealed a reactor that can run for the next 10,000 years without burning any fuel. Two months ago no one even knew this was coming. And yet today scientists around the world are whispering behind closed doors because Maxwell Chikumbutso claims he has created a self-stabilizing vacuum energy core that generates endless power without decay. The idea sounds impossible at first because we have been trained to believe that energy always has a cost, always comes from something, and always runs out eventually. But when Chikambutso stepped onto that dimly lit stage, placed his hand on the small spherical reactor, and said it could power an entire nation for millennia, the room shifted from curiosity to fear. The first thing that stood out about the device was not its size but its silence, a kind of eerie quiet that made people question whether it was even turned on. The engineers present expected to hear humming coils or spinning turbines or at least the faint buzz of electromagnetic movement, but instead the reactor just sat there glowing softly like a dormant star. The demonstration began with a simple test, a massive industrial load bank connected to the reactor using thick insulated cables capable of handling megawatts. Everyone was waiting for some dramatic moment, yet the gauges instantly shot up to maximum output as if the reactor had been producing energy long before anyone entered the room. Chikambutso explained that the heart of the system was a vacuum energy core stabilized by a new configuration of electromagnetic fields that dynamically adjust themselves based on quantum fluctuations. In simpler terms, the device drinks energy from the empty space between particles, tapping into the background fabric of the universe where power theoretically exists everywhere and always. For decades scientists have argued that vacuum energy cannot be harvested because fluctuations are random and unstable, but Chikambutso calmly stated that instability was the exact challenge he solved. According to him the core contains a lattice of micro-resonant chambers that form a self-correcting feedback loop meaning the more unstable the vacuum fluctuations become the more tightly the system stabilizes them. This self-stabilizing behavior is what he claims makes the reactor effectively eternal because the vacuum does not deplete and the core does not degrade. The scientists watching the demonstration were visibly uncomfortable because such a technology breaks almost every assumption taught in modern physics classrooms. If vacuum energy is accessible and controllable then humanity suddenly has access to a source of power billions of times stronger than nuclear energy but without radiation, fuel rods, or waste. One scientist in the audience leaned forward and whispered to his colleague that if the device was real it could eliminate all current power industries overnight. Another quietly muttered that governments would never allow something like this to spread uncontrolled because the geopolitical consequences would be catastrophic. Chikambutso then asked for the lights in the building to be disconnected from the grid and reconnected to the reactor to show its real-time load response. Within seconds the entire hall lit up even brighter than before, powered exclusively by a device the size of a basketball. Gasps erupted across the room, not because the lights turned on but because the output reading remained perfectly stable, with zero fluctuation despite the sudden surge in demand. A researcher from South Africa stepped forward and asked the question everyone was thinking, how long can it run before the core needs maintenance? Chikambutso replied calmly that the core does not require maintenance because nothing inside physically moves, heats up, or wears out. He added that the theoretical lifespan of the vacuum energy core, based on universal expansion rates, is at least 10,000 years before recalibration might be needed. A few people actually laughed nervously, unsure whether he was exaggerating or dead serious, but his technical team presented charts suggesting the calculation was conservative. They described how the device's internal field geometry automatically adjusts to maintain equilibrium as space-time slowly stretches over millennia. This was the moment when several scientists stopped taking notes and started exchanging looks of genuine alarm because the implications were staggering. If the reactor truly remains stable for thousands of years then every power plant in existence becomes obsolete the moment this technology becomes widely available. Imagine a world where every home has a reactor that powers heating, cooling, appliances, water pumps, and electric vehicles with limitless energy at zero cost. Entire cities could be run on reactors smaller than refrigerators, eliminating the need for coal, gas, hydro dams, nuclear facilities, and even solar farms. 
The global economy would shift overnight because trillions of dollars tied to the energy industry would instantly lose value. Oil fields would become relics, power grids would become optional, and wars fought over energy resources would no longer make sense. This is exactly why the scientists at the demonstration looked terrified rather than excited. Humanity has never faced a technological leap this radical because it does not just change how we power machines. It changes the structure of society itself. Chikambutso revealed that the biggest challenge during development was not achieving stable output but preventing runaway amplification, a phenomenon where the core could theoretically harvest far more energy than any system could handle. To solve this he designed a quantum limiter that caps the output and prevents the device from tapping deeper layers of vacuum density that remain unexplored. He emphasized that the limiter is not optional but essential because unlimited energy without regulation can be as dangerous as a star going supernova in your backyard. The audience grew silent as he explained that in early prototypes the core produced bursts of energy so intense they vaporized test equipment and created localized distortions in electromagnetic readings. He stated that the self-stabilizing architecture came from studying natural phenomena like black hole accretion rings where enormous forces remain stable due to balance rather than brute strength. By copying similar patterns on a microscopic scale, he managed to create a core that regulates itself without human intervention. Several physicists raised concerns about long-term environmental effects, questioning whether extracting vacuum energy might affect cosmic dynamics in subtle ways. Chikambutso responded that the vacuum sea is so vast and the energy density so high that the reactor draws an amount equivalent to removing a drop of water from the ocean every 10 billion years. He said even if every household on Earth used one of his reactors the intake would still be immeasurably small compared to the universe's background energy reservoir. A skeptic from a European research institute asked him to explain what happens inside the core at the quantum scale, hoping to catch him in an inconsistency. Chikambutso simply replied that the core forms a self-reinforcing bubble of negative pressure that amplifies vacuum polarization, allowing the device to extract usable energy from quantum jitter. He said that the bubble persists because it continuously feeds on the same fluctuations that create it, essentially becoming a stable quantum engine similar to a self-sustaining eddy in water. The skeptic went silent, not because he believed the explanation but because he could not disprove it without studying the device more closely. Then came the part of the demonstration that triggered the most debate. Chikambutso connected the reactor to a high-voltage capacitor bank and initiated a surge test normally used to measure the durability of grid-scale generators. The expected result was a drop in performance or at least a visible strain on the output, but the reactor instead increased its energy flow instantly to match the load, as if it was anticipating the demand. A few engineers later said that the behavior resembled artificial intelligence responding to a command, but Chikambutso clarified that the core is not sentient but simply follows quantum feedback laws. This adaptability scared the experts more than anything else because it meant the device was not just powerful but intelligent in the way nature is intelligent, fluid, reactive, and self-balancing. After the test, a group of scientists stepped aside and urgently whispered among themselves, discussing the risks of allowing such a technology to fall into public hands without strict oversight. They worried that if even one reactor malfunctioned or was modified illegally it could potentially disrupt electromagnetic fields on a regional scale. Chikambutso anticipated the concern and revealed that each reactor contains a hardwired failsafe that collapses the vacuum bubble if tampered with, rendering the device completely inert. He also mentioned that the core cannot explode because vacuum collapse produces a harmless release of light rather than destructive force. Despite these assurances the fear in the room remained, because humans have never controlled a system that interacts so directly with the fabric of the universe. At one point a government representative asked whether the technology could be weaponized if someone removed the limiter. Chikambutso did not deny the possibility but said doing so would require knowledge far beyond anything available publicly and the device would deactivate itself before reaching dangerous levels. He stated that the core's self-awareness is not consciousness but a type of quantum resilience that forces the system to remain stable above all else. 
After the main presentation Chikambutso unveiled a second prototype shaped like a flat disc the size of a dinner plate capable of powering an entire electric bus indefinitely. This version was designed for vehicles and contained directional field regulators that allow power delivery based on acceleration, load, and driving conditions. He said that future public buses in some African cities might run on these reactors, eliminating fuel costs and drastically reducing urban pollution. He also showed a miniature version installed inside a drone which could theoretically fly for decades without recharging or landing. This revelation shocked the defense experts in the room because long-endurance drones would completely redefine surveillance, logistics, and even warfare. One military observer whispered that whoever controls this technology controls the skies forever. Another said there is no way global powers will allow a private inventor from Africa to hold something this revolutionary without intervention. Chikambutso insisted that his goal is not military dominance but universal access to clean, free power, especially for developing communities that suffer from unreliable grids. To demonstrate safety he allowed journalists to touch the outer casing of the reactor while it was running at full output. The surface remained almost at room temperature, proving that thermal buildup was negligible and heat transfer was nearly non-existent. This stunned observers because traditional generators always produce heat proportional to their energy output. The absence of heat meant less energy loss and near-perfect efficiency, something considered unattainable in conventional physics. After three hours of demonstrations Chikambutso concluded by saying that humanity has always believed unlimited energy was a fantasy, but the universe has been offering it freely since the beginning of time. He said humans simply needed the courage to look beyond the limitations of classical physics and embrace the deeper quantum rules that govern reality. When the event ended half the experts rushed to analyze the data while the other half quietly slipped out, likely to inform their governments about the implications. Some called the technology dangerous. Some called it miraculous. Some refused to believe it was real at all. But everyone agreed on one thing. If Maxwell Chikambutso's new reactor is genuine, the world will never be the same again. The fear does not come from the device itself but from what it means for power companies, fuel industries, militaries, governments, and the entire global structure built on energy scarcity. A world powered by vacuum energy would make centralized grids irrelevant, making it much harder for authorities to control populations through electricity access. Countries that depend on exporting oil or gas would face economic collapse almost instantly. Nuclear plants costing billions to build would become worthless overnight. Even renewable energy companies would struggle because a reactor that lasts 10,000 years eliminates the need for solar panels and wind farms. This is why scientists are terrified, not because they doubt the technology but because they understand exactly how disruptive it will be. And yet despite all the fear and uncertainty one thing remains undeniable, humanity cannot ignore a breakthrough that promises free, infinite, clean energy for every person on the planet. The question now is not whether the technology works but whether the world is ready to accept it. And as history has shown time and time again, the world never truly welcomes change until change becomes impossible to stop. Maxwell Chikambutso's vacuum energy reactor may very well be that unstoppable change, a breakthrough that forces humanity into a future where power is no longer controlled by corporations or nations but by the universe itself. If that future arrives, and if this reactor is real, the next 10,000 years of human civilization might be brighter than anything we can imagine today. But the transition to that future will be chaotic, frightening, and filled with resistance from those who benefit from the old world.